you can still group, but you can't trade, right? Wow, look at this crowd. Hello, BlizzCon. My name's Josh Greenfield, and I'm the senior game producer on WoW Classic. I'm here to talk to you today about our new season for a Classic World of Warcraft, Season of Descent. Is that an Overwatch tattoo? Today, I'm going to give you an introduction and an overview of what our season is at a very high level, as well as giving you an idea of what our major features are. After this overview, I'm gonna hand things off to a few other Classic team members to dig into some specifics about what I'm gonna cover. So, let's go ahead and jump in. So, it seems fitting to start off talking about discoveries. It's, it's in the name, after all, so it seems pretty important to the season. Um, when you first start a character in Season of Discovery, it'll look and feel identical to original World of Warcraft. You'll slay kobolds, you'll give lazy peons a bonk, all the kind of normal things you do when starting fresh in World of Warcraft. Work, work. When you get to around level two, however, in the starter zone, your class trainer will offer you a new quest, and this is to go find your first rune. We'll talk about runes in a little bit. Level minute, two. After that, the in like, after that intro quest, okay. the game simply tells you, go find more. And that's kind of where discoveries come in. Discoveries are essentially secrets hidden throughout the game world. They usually aren't quests in the traditional sense. There's nothing on your map to show them to you. This is classic after all. And some may be as simple as a treasure coffer deep in a cobalt mine, but many are small events kind of unto themselves, oftentimes requ requiring more than one player, uh, a little bit of creativity, or some keen observation skills to obtain. One of the things we love about Azeroth is the sense skills. of awe and wonder it inspires. It's a massive world. But due to the kind of solved nature of original WoW, it can sometimes feel a lot smaller than it did when we first started our adventures. Discoveries are a way to disrupt that a bit. Keep the world familiar, comfortable, but add enough new things to find to evoke that sense of adventure and exploration we first felt when I mean, we stepped foot yeah. in Azeroth. Beyond the next hill, deep in the next crypt or cave, something exciting. So, so it does seem like they're adding new content to the original classic, right? We're talking about new quests, discover new runes. I mean, this is a whole new like quest line. Maybe even, like you just said, going into places that maybe you've never been to before and now are there or something. So, yeah. I mean, I, I can see where this is like the, cla the start of Classic Plus. Yeah. Thing could be hidden. Like Ascension, One Turtle, whatever. What I love about Discoveries is this social and information sharing aspect. For those first few weeks of each phase, Not we my hope classic. to find secret finding communities pop up, both in and out of game, as players scour Azeroth to find all these little hidden things. We can't wait to read general chat as players begin sharing what they found with each other in real time. We think that social and info sharing aspect is super exciting, and we can't wait to see. Not when Wowhead gives you the information in like found. two seconds of launch. In order to preserve this sense of discovery, no PTR though. Not be holding a public beta or PTR for. Yeah, of that's awesome. Well, maybe we don't get a Wowhead okay. post before it launches then. <laughs> We want day one of Season of Discovery to feel as fresh and full of surprises as we can. So we're taking a chance here to keep those first few weeks as exciting as possible. The last thing we'll say about Discoveries now is that we wanted to craft them in a way that really felt at home in original WoW. Many times when playtesting amongst ourselves, we'd find a new NPC or an object, and someone would hesitate and say, like, is this from 2004? Is this, is this new? And we're like, yeah, it's new. It, like, that's new to the season. And to us, that's a great success. The mm -hmm, idea mm -hmm. here is that these things feel as like a natural part of Azeroth as it was at this point in WoW's history. Next, let's talk a little bit about level-banded content phases and what that means. In essence, level banded content phases are how we're going to approach the level up journey in Season of Discovery. When we initially launch, the level cap in Season of Discovery will be level 25. After a number of weeks, the level cap will increase to a higher level for the next phase. Okay. So why a level cap of 25 to start with? Well, our inspiration for this actually came from the WoW Classic beta in 2019. We saw how much fun the game was when the level was capped at a lower level and how players would find new and exciting talent and item combinations to optimize around. And this is something we've... What he meant was we found out how players love being extremely fucking sweaty at level 17 and trying to collect every blue in the world and twinking themselves out with enchants to one-shot people in PvP. That's what he's really saying. <laughs> 
always look back fondly. Whatever, I did it on my and warrior. It's something we've wanted to sort of explore you know, ever since. I did it on my warrior. Uh, we also realized how that was one of them. an initial level cap, lower level cap could be. We talk a lot internally about approachability on WoW Classic and respecting players' time. There's a major goal of this level banded approach to, to really give you a chance to get into it. One of the things we really consistently see on forums or social media too is, is it too late to start? And oftentimes we'll hear this literally within a day or two of a new release. Yep. And obviously yep. it's never too late to start playing classic WoW. Yes. But as we've all you know, grown into additional responsibilities and found ourselves spending maybe a little less time playing games than we used to, we can definitely feel that sense of kind of fear of missing out or FOMO when we log in after a long week and see our friends 10 or 20 levels ahead of us. And for that, this level banded approach is perfect. It is there good. will be plenty to it do in each good. New, new leveling journey uh, with from the quests and dungeons and battlegrounds we all know and love to finding all the brand new things to discover across Azeroth. And then later on, leveling new alts to find all of their hidden discoveries as well. There's lots to do, but we're hoping that you won't ever feel that sense of being behind just because you couldn't play on a given day. We also plan to give a very sizable experience boost to the previous level band every time we raise the level cap. Okay. This is kind of similar to Joyous Journeys and Wrath Classic. Very nice. That. Yeah, that's that's so even good. So if you miss a phase that's good. once a level and all, that, the experience you'll be able boost is to good. catch up to your friends in no time. Think about this for a second, everyone. There is technically going to be five versions of WoW. There's, there's going to be technically five versions of WoW, I think. You have Classic Era, you have Classic Hardcore, you have Season of Discovery, Cataclysm Classic, Retail. There's five versions of WoW. You can easily say the top five MMOs in the world are probably a combination of those five with maybe Final Fantasy XIV being in there at like number two or three. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's crazy. And they're, they're just going to be printing money. A everyone thinks that every, there's always this bickering between retail and, and, and classic and hardcore classic Andes who don't like Discovery. Yo, to Blizzard, it don't matter. It, $14.99 is coming all over the place. There's $14.99 happening everywhere. You know, like I think if you were to combine maybe the number of, of subs they have across the board now, it's got to be a pretty decent number. But yeah, like that just hit me right now. I, I started counting in my brain. I'm like, there's five versions of five, five separate versions of WoW that do not interact with one another. Classic era, hardcore, cataclysm classic, season of discovery, and retail. That's just nuts. Five versions. It's crazy, man. So the next thing we want to talk about is in-game at, at level cap. So when we kind of decided on this level banded content approach, we had to kind of sit down and ask ourselves, what is in-game when the level cap is 25? And first, I think it makes sense to talk a little bit about, about our inspiration. And this is something we really keep coming back to a lot Excuse on Classic. Me. Since this is a version of original WoW, we wanted to start out grounded in familiar locations and put the focus for the new stuff on fresh gameplay and mechanics in those iconic dungeons and locales. To that end, our first raid in Season of Discovery will be the iconic dungeon, Black Fathom Deeps, reimagined as a 10-player raid instance. It was fun. The bosses were kind of easy mechanically, but it was it was definitely fun with ten with like nine other people, Next, well, eight other random strangers. Is to ensure that these are fully featured, deep, satisfying raids, and not simply the addition of a few mechanics to existing encounters as they were in 2004. All of these encounters are a full ground up redesign and should feel like proper raid encounters. And of course, with new raids comes lots of new loot. Everyone loves loot. I love in loot. In addition to raids, we also really want to play up that PvP aspect. And as a result, we're planning to add several outdoor PvP events to the game as the level caps increase. Yeah, those three PvPers were really happy. Lastly, Let's one go. of the things we're most excited about is where we go when we start getting to higher levels. We are leaving the door open to the possibility of completely new experiences and the prospects of exploring previously unfinished or unused locales for future raid and dungeon content. Oh, sorry, getting a level 60. I know, I'm excited too. I'm excited too. That's crazy. 
<laughs> we think that level 25 is going to be full of great memorable comp gameplay that feels right at home in original WoW, but this is the, just the first step and we think the best is yet to come. I don't, man, I don't know what I want to do in Discovery, man. A, a part of me wants to just try playing a whole new style of tank. Like, I want to maybe be like an Enhancement Shaman tank or a Rogue tank. or oh, I, I loved the shit out of the Warlock tank when I did it yesterday. But man, there's that little part of me that says Vanilla Prop Paladin with Taunt. It's a game changer, you know. It's 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 like a fucking game changer, right? Like I no longer have to rely on my consecrate and my judges to snap threat, you know. Like, dude, yeah, finally, like that that right there is enough to keep me occupied with Discovery, dude. Yeah, I got I could have two characters. Yeah, I think w when Discovery comes out, and because it's only level twenty five, it'll probably be easy to level multiple characters, and it's not hardcore, right? So if you die, it's okay. Maybe they'll announce something with hardcore. I don't know. But yeah, I think my plan is on, on November 30th when it launches is going to be to probably level a prop paladin first and then a warlock tank second. I think that's going to be the way I'm going to do it. You know? Oh, they're going to have Avenger Shield too? Is that, is that like a confirmation? It's retail. Wow. Cataclysm Classic Season of Discovery. Do, do, do the office meme. We're looking at the same thing. So next, let's kind of change gears and talk about rune engraving a little bit. So this is one of the most exciting new things about Season of Discovery. One of the most consistent pieces of feedback we've gotten from previous iterations of original WoW, such as our Season of Mastery, is that many players would like to try some adjustments to their favorite class or Yeah, spec. link me the, link me the uh, runes if you really can. We really wanted to take a chance with Season of Discovery and go kind of wild here, and we did. Oh, Demonic That's Grace is awesome. That's where rune engraving comes in. Rune engraving is a new skill that all Season of Discovery characters know automatically on character creation. Rune engraving allows you to gather, learn, and apply new class abilities directly to your equipment, kind of like enchants. In the initial 1 through 25 experience, you'll be able to discover runes in your chest, legs, and glove slots. And as the level cap increases, additional runes for other item slots will be discoverable over time. Once learned, runes are permanent and can be applied and reapplied to your, your gear at will, just out of combat. One of the most exciting things about these runes is that they exist completely outside of the talent system, meaning that you could very realistically splash in, you know, uh, damage abilities with a healing talent spec so you can soul a little bit better, or you could swap maybe to tanking ability runes uh, to round out the tank spot in your five-player group if you're missing one. You may also encounter previously faction-specific paladin and shaman buffs as runes, which helps bring some parity to each faction without those classes losing their unique flavor or the factions losing their unique flavor. In order to also streamline the talent system to mm. go along with runes, we do plan to adjust the respec cost to be much more nominal in Season of Discovery, particularly at low levels. Damn. Bro, look at this, dude. Yeah, thanks for linking. Oh, my God. Paladins will have Seal of the Martyrdom. They're going to have Divine Storm as runes. Horn of Lordaeron. Paladin blows the horn, which increases total strength and agility of all party members within 30 yards by 17, exclusive with Blessing of Might. Aegis for block value. Divine Sacrifice. Inspiring Templar. Avenger Shield. Exorcist. Rebuke for Interrupting. Jesus. Wait, does the Avenger Shield interrupt too? Well, it's, it's the day's version. It's the day's version. There it is. Hand of Reckoning taunts the, a target to attack you. It has no effect that the target will attack you. While you know this ability, the threat bonus from Righteous Fury is increased to 80%. And Righteous Fury causes you to gain mana when healed by others equal to 25% of the amount healed. So they're kind of like pushing everything together. Additionally, while Righteous Fury is active, damage, which takes you below 35% health, is reduced by 20%, which is what? Ardent Defender? Um, Righteous Fury will remain active until count cancel. So did they just okay? Hold on. So did they just put in Ardent Defender, Taunt, and Blessing of like Sanctuary all into one, all into one fucking rune? Like, like what? <laughs> Fuck! Oh my god, this is gonna be so much fun. I mean, right now I already know I'm going Hand of Reckoning for gloves. I'm going Avenger Shield for legs. I would, I would, I mean, I would go rebuke, but someone else can interrupt. Uh, and for chest, I mean, dude, I, I mean, can you divine storm with a one hander? Because 
that'd be kind of badass. Avenger Shield into a fucking divine storm or whatever. Like, I think this is really cool. I, like, when I played Discovery yesterday, I was really excited. You know, I'm not really this much excited for classic shit, but like, this excites me more than like hardcore and classic era, you know? Horn for group buff, maybe. That that is so crazy. Hold on, what what, what do warriors get? Like, now I gotta look at warriors. Really cool. Wait, where's the shaman taunt? What's their taunt called? Earth shield. Okay, so earth shield. I'm assuming is what gives them the threat. No, hold on. Oh, rock bite. Oh, rock biter. Yeah, rock biter makes sense. Uh, you gain six percent reduced chance to be critically hit in melee attacks, and earth shock taunts targets to attack you, and has a separate cooldown from other shock spells. Okay, so you, you get the Earth Shock as a taunt. That's sick. That is sick. Good lord. And I'm assuming rogues will probably have like a combo point taunt or something like that. Right? Well, there's parry chance for Blade Dance. Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem like rogues are actual tanks, right? Maybe like off tanks or something? It's t Oh, it's tied to Blade Flurry? Okay. Uh, they don't have all of them. Oh, here you go. Warrior runes. What, I mean, what do you do with a warrior for warrior runes? Like, I mean, the warriors are already tanks. Uh, you got Devastate, sing Single-Minded Fury, Quick Strike, Victory Rush, Warbringer, okay, Furious Thunder. Thunderclap now increases the time between attacks by an additional 6% can be used in any stance. We got Flagellation, Blood Frenzy. Oh, dude, that's exciting. The prop paladin stuff is super exciting. I hope that's the case. I hope that I can ruin myself as like a dungeon tank that has Divine Storm, Avenger Shield, and Taunt. That's all I want. That's going to be so giga... That's going to slap, dude. And that's not all. That's not all. Who knows? Maybe, just maybe, someday, you won't be constrained to just one talent spec in Season of Discovery. Who knows? So, oh, dual specialization overall, confirmed. We've been playing this a ton internally. We've been having so much fun with it. It's everything we love about classic, plus so much more. Ha! <laughs> ah, this guy. I see what he At did this, there. I see I'd what like you did. I'd like to hand this off to, over to one of our lead software engineers, you, Norvaletta. I know you. I know you. You're good. On the different classes, as well as you're good, you. You're good. I said you're good. Take it away, Nora. Not our classic plus, y'all. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. It's my classic hey, plus. Hey, My name's Nora Valletta, and along with Anna, I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. There are... <laughs> Thanks. There are over 100 runes in the 1 to 25 leveling bracket across all classes, and we'd love for you guys to go forth and discover them on your own. However, to give you an idea of what to expect, I have a few to share with you today. First things first, I want to share some of the things we had in mind when designing runes in Season of Discovery. One is to shake up the meta. Our seasonal content is a great opportunity to deliver WoW Classic, but with a twist. With our non-seasonal content, we try to deliver a classic experience close to the original, but with seasons, we have the freedom to experiment with what-if scenarios, such as what if rogues could tank, what if paladins did have, an, have a taunt? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> see, people point, are happy about that. <laughs> we wanted to introduce abilities such that each class has something special, something that other classes can point to and go, dang, that's so cool. I wish I could do that. Many of the runes you find are greatest hits remixes of popular abilities from various WoW expansions, so many of them will be familiar to you. That said, some of these familiar abilities may actually behave a little differently than you remember. Some spells and abilities you'll discover have never been introduced before in any WoW expansion. For these, that's actually huge. We were careful to make sure they were an appropriate fit for class fantasy. They could be added to retail. Most importantly, we want classic to continue to feel like classic. Many of the iconic spells and abilities you've seen in various WoW expansions feel fitting for that expansion or fitting for modern WoW, but Stealth would feel warriors. out of place in classic, so we tried to avoid introducing anything with a too modern feel and made adjustments wherever it made sense. Anyways, 
Enough of that. <laughs> Let's take a sneak peek at some of those abilities. Druids. Oh. In Season of Discovery, you have an interrupt called Skull Bash, which can be used in cat or bear form. Fury of Storm Rage removes the mana cost of Wrath. Dealing damage with Wrath has a chance to make your next healing touch instant. Wild Growth applies a heal over time effect to your target and up to five nearby party members. Hello, Hunters. Beast Mastery will increase your pet's damage, health, and focus regen. Growl is now a proper taunt. Explosive Shot is a ranged damage over time ability. Hmm. And Lone Wolf gives you a damage boost if you have no active pet. Pair this with dual wielding, and you've got yourself a mean melee hunter. What a... I know Lone Wolf was in retail, but hold on now. So, is she implying that you could possibly tank as a hunter because the... Pets now have a proper taunt, like, as in, like they can taunt bosses and keep aggro. And I mean, there's no gen there, there's no threat generation. Maybe. Probably not. All right. Well. Mages. <laughs> Ice Lance is an instant frost spell that deals triple damage to frozen targets. Living flame causes flames to erupt and chase a nearby enemy, leaving a burning trail in its wake. And regeneration is a heal, which marks your target with a temporal beacon. Another rune ability called Rewind Time will heal the damage taken over the previous five seconds. You can heal other people with this, by the way, not just yourself. So I hope you've made room on your roster for mage healers. Okay. Paladins. <laughs> In WoW Classic, they don't have a taunt, but here it is in Season of Discovery. You see the crowd? My prop paladin and brothers and sisters, taunt, let's go. Knowing this ability will also increase the threat bonus of Righteous Fury and cause you to gain mana when healed by other players. Crusader Strike is a weapon attack. <laughs> It's a weapon attack, which costs no additional mana and instead regenerates your mana slightly with each hit. And Seal of Martyrdom can be activated to cause melee attacks to strike other nearby targets. You'll lose health when inflicting damage with this. However, nearby party members will gain mana based on the damage you take. Oh, shit. Priests. You can channel penance to hear, heal near, nearby friendly targets or deal damage to enemy targets. Prayer of Mending heals your target the next time they take damage or receive healing. Afterwards, it'll bounce no to another divine friendly soul. player nearby. Homunculi animates three miniature copies of your character, which will attack your target with a mace, a sword, and an axe, reducing their attack speed, attack power, and armor, respectively. Yeah, Shadow Priest cracked oh. in PvP as usual. From stealth, Shadow Strike allows you to teleport behind your target and strike for a nice big chunk of damage. And Venom is a finishing move. It deals poison damage based on your deadly poison doses on the target and also increases the frequency of applying instant poison for some time afterwards. Just a Flesh Wound is our rogue tank ability. You generate way more threat, you take reduced physical damage while Blade Dance is active, you're less likely to be critically hit by melee attacks, and your faint ability turns into a taunt called Tease. Huh. The fuck? So, so here's the thing. I, I can definitely understand how, like, true to the, you know, old, old, old school classic WoW players might not like this because they are, in fact, taking abilities from future retail expansions, right? and putting them into classic as runes that you can use to amplify your character. That I understand, but I just don't think it's fucking cool. Like, you can't really have a classic plus, and the plus cannot be just new content. The plus has to be systems implemented that change the way that classic is. That's what classic plus should be, you know? <laughs> Kungans and shambles. I don't know, dude. Prop Paladin taunt. I'm already in, so, Shamans. you know. 24-hour stream, Inc. Lava Lash deals offhand weapon damage. Offhand. In Season of Discovery, Enhancement Shamans can dual wield with the help of another rune not pictured here. Happy hunting. Healing Rain is a gradual AoE heal which can be placed on the ground 
or on a lamppost or on the ceiling. <laughs> Way of Earth allows you to perform the coveted role of Shaman Tank. Yeah, I knew that was gonna get a good, I knew that was gonna get a good pop. That got a good pop from the With crowd. This, you'll deal increased threat, you'll take less damage, and Earth Shock becomes your taunt. Warlocks. <laughs> This is gonna be, Warlocks are sick, man. Haunt deals damage, increases all shadow damage you deal to the target, and heals you for the damage it dealt once it's dispelled or expires. Chaos Bolt sends a big beefy bolt of fire at the enemy. It always hits, it can't be resisted, and it causes all of your fire spells to pierce through absorption effects. And Metamorphosis. It was so badass tanking in Metamorphosis yesterday. I fucking this loved it. This is your shape shift, allowing you to transform into a demon, similar to a druid's bear form, increasing your armor and reducing your chance to be critically hit. Searing pain becomes instant, Shadow Bolt becomes a melee cleave, and Curse of Recklessness is your taunt. That's why I wasn't using. Warriors. <laughs> Warriors. Warriors. Victory Rush is a weapon attack that can be used after killing an enemy. It will heal you for a certain percentage of your health. Devastate will cause your Sunder Armor to deal main hand weapon damage, increased for each stack of Sunder Armor already on the target. And Raging Blow is a vicious strike that deals heavy damage, but can only be used while enraged. Now this is just a taste of all the abilities coming to classes in Season of Discovery. And really, bottom line, we want everyone to feel OP. Making warriors less OP or making everyone OP? Dude, warriors are getting like the fu they're getting shit on here, bro. <laughs> Anyways, enough about runes. Let's instead turn our attention to the ancient forest of Ashenvale in northern Kalimdor. Ashenvale is known for its beauty, its rich natural resources, and its role as a hotly contested territory between the Horde and the Alliance. In Season of Discovery, earning kills while in Ashenvale will trigger a zone-wide PvP event. Hmm. During this event, a leader will appear in the zone for each faction. Oh? A Farseer for the Horde, and a Priestess of the Moon for the Alliance. Your objective is simple. It's to defeat the enemy leader. Now this is easier said than done. So what you're telling me is they put Ashran in Ashenvale. Is that what I'm gathering here? They put the two ashes together. You got like war fronts or kind of like Ashran with the, with, with the leaders, maybe. Yeah. Hey. Done. These leaders are tough, so you'll have to work together. Do the to leaders move out. up, though? Or? In addition Let to the see. main camps where those faction leaders reside, okay. various other camps will spawn across the zone for okay. each faction. The Priestess of the Moon and the Farseer are each buffed by respective leaders in those smaller camps. All right. The more of those small camps you can take out, the weaker your enemy's faction leader will become. Sounds familiar. It's much like Alterac Valley. Okay. This event is an awesome way to earn honor, as well as reputation with Warsong Gulch factions, which allows you to unlock some of the best level 25 gear in the game. You'll also be able to earn a mount, which you can actually use at level 25, but only in Ashenvale. It will increase your speed that, by 50 percent, okay. giving that's, you the extra boost you need to seek and destroy the enemy. That's all you gotta tell me. That's all you gotta tell me. Hey, Tally, you know what? You do this, you get a mount. I'm in. I'm in. If Paladin Taunt wasn't enough, I'm in on the mount alone. Let's go. So, come kick some ash in Ashenvale. I'll see you there. Come kick some ash in Ashenvale. Ma'am, this is a T for teen game. Please watch your language. Anyways. I've done enough talking. It's time for me to pass things off to Tim, who's going to talk to you about raids and the PvE endgame. Take it away, Tim. Thank you, Nora. Hey, BlizzCon! <laughs> My name is Tim Jones, and I'm the assistant lead designer on World of Warcraft Classic. Woo! <laughs> I love this guy's jacket, bro. The multiplayer content is the heart Very of Very Fonzarelli. I like it. Whether we're questing hey. together, running a dungeon, hey. crafting an item for a friend, or chatting in guild about where to find that new metamorphosis rune for Warlock, WoW offers one of the richest multiplayer experiences across all of gaming. And Season of Discovery aims to deliver on providing new group content that's both challenging and rewarding. 
Now first, I want everyone to take a moment with me and imagine, alongside the Zorm Strand on Ashenvale's north coast lies the ruins of an ancient elven temple to the goddess Alun. Evil stirs within, drawing the likes of the Naga and the Twilight's Hammer in search of power and anything that could hasten the coming of the old gods. You know, maybe you've been here before, maybe not. No matter your familiarity with this place, it's hard not to be drawn in by the mystique, the rich art, the level design, as well as the robust creature and spell ecology of Black Fathom Deeps. You know, on the classic team, we couldn't help but ask ourselves, could this amazing location be more than just a five-player dungeon? So we're excited. Get your level 25 Prebis, equip your runes, find nine of your best friends, and get ready. I have no friends. The Classic team is proud to announce Level Up Raids. New instance challenges for raid groups at, uh, to experience the max level for each of Season of Discovery's content bands. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh, he means like Black Fathom Deeps. You know, at level 25, Black Fathom Deeps is the first, oh. the first level first. up raid What's that second? you'll experience in Season of Discovery. Well, what's second, bro? You know, groups should be easy to form. What's after that? Grab a couple like, tanks and healers, make a party no of ten. Gone, you're good to go. What's going on? God knows, everyone and their mom can tank and heal in Season of Discovery now, so that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> and content phases in Season of Discovery won't be as long as traditional classic expansion patches either. And we want you to have as many opportunities to explore and plunder the riches within. And as such, Black Fathom will offer a three-day lockout. Oh, no more an SM? Oh, a three-day lockout? That's it? <laughs> That's it? Nice. The story's the same. The location and creatures may be familiar, familiar to some, but the challenges and rewards are brand new. Seven new bosses are here to both entertain and test your skills. And how could we not make raid content without new loot? Existing quests and rewards have also been updated for the raid as well. And you'll even be able to find secrets within the raid. Can you solve the mystery of the Twilight Artisan? Can you find the recipes for the Black Fathom Sharpening Stones and Wizard Oil? And will you be the first group to access the new world buff, Boon of Black Fathom? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What, 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 what's the buff? Okay. What's the buff? I love your guys' enthusiasm. This is amazing. Let's peek behind the curtain at what challenges await players in Black Fathom. You know, or as we affectionately call it, BFD. Not to be confused with BRD or BFA or BWL or BWD. You, you guys get the idea. <laughs> Baron Aquinas, he guards the entrance. No longer a simple quest NPC. You must challenge his elemental lieutenants that inhabit the Fathom Stones and defeat him. And in doing so, you may face off against Aquinas himself atop the infamous jumping puzzle. <laughs> that was hell yesterday you know, killing this and boss, bro. You must to get in range of the Baron, but beware both the boss and your teammates because there are many apparel that may knock you off. In all honesty, this boss is lightly tuned, and there are some hidden power ups below the water to help you uh, return to the platform. That's what that was under the water power ups. <laughs> yeah, he has, like a, he has like a Baron Geddon mechanic, pretty much like I think one person in your raid is marked as a bomb. And if they're near anybody else, it just knocks you the, ba the, the fuck back. So we didn't realize until halfway through the fight that if you get the bomb, you have to jump in the water so no one else gets knocked back. So the whole fight was just 10 of us just getting fucking knocked into the water, trying to run around, get back on a jumping puzzle, get to him to DPS him down. Next off, you must face against Gamura. The fearsome turtle that's been swimming in the enchanted waters of the deeps for a long, long Lay time. What's going on, brother? You know, exposure to these energies has granted her both power and size, but most importantly, she's now protected by a magical barrier that protects her against almost any attack. Break through this barrier and start blasting for massive damage. Get your orange parse. <laughs> Get your orange parse. You know, all this commotion will bring you to the attention. D. Carter, of what's Cerebus. up, brother? A powerful and reckless Naga Sea Witch who commands a legion of Black Fathom Elite in Myrmidons. We wiped here on She's this a boss. Formidable foe we got her the ten percent. will overwhelm you unless you find a way to turn her own spells against her and her minions. You know, these three bosses round out the prologue of Black Fathom Deeps, and in all three are available to fight in our demo in Hall D. Check it out. Because like, what happens is like the demo like just stops. Well, it doesn't stop like. 
a big thing says thank you for playing because I guess like they time everyone so you can't sit there forever. And we had her at like 10%. And then it stopped us and like ported us out and we had to stop. And I was kind of sad because I thought we, we were going to kill it. Was it tuned down for BlizzCon? It was pretty easy for BlizzCon. Like I, I would say, and, try, and once again, it was 10 of us and only like me, Lula and Lux knew each other. And then I had a, a viewer uh, from the Chan who was another tank who was just in line and he found me and we, he was a tank. I was a, I was a warlock tank. And like the other people, we, we were just like kind of yelling across at each other on what to do. So it was very chaotic, but it did. It definitely did not seem very hard. But I think I think I think the demo itself was tuned so that BlizzCon players cannot struggle and like enjoy it. I think when it's live, it's probably going to be a bit harder because we were cracked out in like all the best runes and and we had like buffs and we had potions and elixirs and everything. So. <laughs> And that's not it. Witness the corruption of Gellihast and take on the march of the Void Murlocs. Break past Lorgas Jet's magical barriers and corrupted totems. Conquer your dreams as you challenge Twilight Lord Kelris. And good luck against the giant Void Hydra. Seriously, you're going to need it. <laughs> and not to forget, there will be glittering prizes awaiting you, including some of these fancy items. Now, telling you all this is great. Oh, we got the, we actually got I the Fathom Blade. Just show you. So it is my pleasure to provide a quick sneak peek video of the raid, edited by the team itself, as though it was pulled straight from a community website in 2005. Please take a look. <laughs> oh my God. This is such an old looking video. I never thought I would see a Black Fathom Deep's fucking hype video in, in my entire life playing WoW. But they did it. They somehow did it. Yeah, like, who, who the fuck makes a hype video for Black Fathom, bro? And it works. Jesus Christ. This, this looks like a wowmovies.com video from like back in 2005, bro. I'm excited for this, bro. This will probably be my my, sec, my like second favorite version of wow. Well, that's uh, it for today, outside guys. of retail. We're looking forward to... Oh, Placeholder okay. slide, that's, remove uh, me. That shouldn't be here. Um, okay, uh, no Mergon. Um, Scarlet okay, Monastery. Sorry, God damn it. Wait, was that Strat at the end? Oops. Oh, oh Karazhan uh, Crips. Kara Crips. That's it for today. <laughs> well, we went, we went there the during Legion, team, right? And in Legion, we went to the Crips. The top, nothing that we do in WoW Classic would be possible without all of your support and your voice. Thank you so much for making the dream of WoW Classic and all the experiences we're working on a reality. We can't wait to see what else. We this is this was a really future. good. What's next? This was really good. So please stay tuned for Hearthstone. What's next coming up right after this? And we hope you have enjoyed this look ahead at what's next for WoW Classic. I want to reiterate: this is just a taste of all that you're going to uncover in Season of Discovery. And for those of you here at BlizzCon, we hope you get to take on the first three bosses of our Black Fathom Deep's raid on the show floor. And for everyone else, we are so excited for you to experience it. When Season of Discovery launches worldwide in just a few short weeks on November 30th. That's crazy. That means they must have been working on this for like quite some time, right? Like November 30th is literally in three weeks, almost three weeks, like three and a half weeks still until we get there. But I mean, you know, 
And the timing of it is really good too, because if you're a retail player, and let's say, like even on, on our level, right, like on a cutting edge level of rating, we're, we're like the, November November fourteenth is when we start gearing. We'll probably be done gearing before the thirtieth, and we'll be kind of like already in just like mythic logging in mode. And the most we'll be doing is just kind of min maxing like our vaults and shit. So yeah, so like. I'm definitely going to put a lot of time into Discovery while I'm also raiding Mythic in WoW and doing my keys and stuff. So at least that's something to do. You know what's great about being a like if you if you're a WoW content creator, you got to be over the moon and you got to be happy. There's just endless content, five different versions of WoW, and you could be a creator for three of the five, two of the five, one of the five, right? Like, it's insane. It's insane. Five different versions of WoW. Like, you know, like, fuck, dude. Still not a fresh vanilla server, though. Ah, they, you have classic era for that, right? Yeah, you, 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 got, you have the classic era. That, that, that's not bad at all. Yeah, WoW dead, by the way. Retail is dead. No Classic Plus. Classic is dead, yet five versions of WoW are going to be slammed in our face and literally, like, what? In, within the next year? At some point within the next year, we're going to have five versions, right? At the same time. Right now, we're only going to get, what, four? Oh, no, no. Technically five, because Wrath of the Lich King still kind of counts. Yeah, right? You can't, you can't do